Everyone goes through phases of low moods, sadness, or despair. These phases are part of life and usually pass after a while. It is different for people who have depression. People who have depression plunge into a low emotional state over several weeks and months and often can't see a way out. Negative feelings and thoughts impact their thinking and behavior, even if this is not triggered by a specific event or a clear reason. If the depression takes the form of a single occurrence, it is called a depressive episode. This can develop into a recurring depressive disorder or even chronic depression. Symptoms range from persistent sadness and dejection, lack of interest, lack of motivation and loss of appetite, to sleep disorders, anxiety about the future and suicidal thoughts. There are various approaches to treating depression. Behavioral activation starts in the here and now. In contrast to certain psychiatric or psychotherapeutic approaches, this does not involve dealing with traumatic experiences from the past. Instead, solutions for problems in the present are found. The main goal of behavioral activation is to actively get those affected back in touch with their environment to help them experience the world positively. However, the effectiveness of this is controversial. And that's reason enough for us to look into the matter. Helsada is committed to health and actively encourages personal responsibility and health literacy. We take a close look at complex health issues and reveal the facts. The Harding Center for Risk Literacy has summarized the benefits and risks of behavioral activation as a short-term psychotherapeutic treatment for moderate to severe depression compared to treatment without psychiatric treatment or psychotherapy. For around 53 in 100 people who did not receive psychiatric treatment or psychotherapy but were looked after by a general practitioner instead, their symptoms of depression decreased significantly within 12 weeks. Among those treated with behavioral activation, symptoms of depression decreased significantly within 12 weeks for 75 in 100 people. This means that 22 in 100 people benefited more from behavioral activation than from general medical care. People who were treated with behavioral activation also had fewer worries and anxieties than those who did not receive psychiatric treatment or psychotherapy. On the other hand, behavioral activation caused more adverse events to occur in 3 in 100 people, such as hospital admission, suicidal thoughts and attempted suicide. In summary, behavioral activation can help reduce symptoms of depression and improve worries and anxieties. However, for people with severe chronic depression, this approach can be very challenging as it only aims to solve current problems without addressing the root cause. Whether behavioral activation treatment is worthwhile depends on the goals of the person in question and the severity of their depression. A doctor can help you choose the right treatment. Now you have a better understanding of this complex subject.